One thing that changes when you hit puberty is your sweat, and we're going to show you why. Does anybody want to smell my armpits? Do you want to smell my armpits? Free sweat smelling here. Can I tempt you a little whiff? Anyone? Anyone? Don't seem to be having much luck for some reason. Sweat. It might seem a bit yucky, but everybody does it. Sweating is what your body does when you get too hot. And when that sweat evaporates, it takes heat away from your body and prevents your internal organs from overheating. So it's actually pretty wonderful stuff. I'm not sure why nobody wants to smell mine. <laughs> there are two types of sweat glands, eccrine and apocrine. Eccrine are the most common. You have over two million of them all over your body. Apocrine glands are only in particular places, like your groin and under your arms. They produce a different type of sweat that is rich in protein and fatty acids. They only become active during, you guessed it, puberty. When your apocrine glands start working, it changes how you sweat. And this lot are going to help me show you what that means. First, we're going to need a sample. In fact, two samples. One sample is made up of a group of eight-year-olds who haven't started puberty yet. The other sample is made up of 14-year-olds who are slap-bang in the middle of it. And what I need from all of you now is sweat. Are you ready? Yeah! Right, let's go. For the next half hour, I'm getting both squads to train as hard as they can and sweat as much as possible. What we're looking for here is real work. It's not a race between the two teams. We want quality, because quality means sweat. Ben, you sweating yet? Yeah. Yeah? That's good. After 30 minutes, I'm satisfied that both teams will have sweated enough. It's time to collect all the sweaty shirts into separate bags. Now, we've got our samples. The squads don't know which shirts are in which bag, so let's see which smells worse. One at a time, you're going to smell each bag and tell me which you think smells worse. Bag A is from the younger team and bag B is from the teenagers. Which one do you think will smell worse? Get right in there. That one. Is it really disgusting? Huh. That one. What does this one smell of? Like off vinegar. Oh, you think that one smells worse? This one. And what do you think this one smells of? Rotten cheese. Rotten cheese. Oh, that one. Do you think this is your team? Or do you, um, think, you think the eight-year-olds are smellier than you? Yeah. Big breath in, Ben. This <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> really? I, I, I smell my own armpit for one of these things. <laughs> so which of you thought that bag B was the smelliest? Yeah, all except two. That's 12-2 to bag B. Now, this was the bag from the older ones. So I think you're absolutely right. This definitely should have been the smelliest one. Now, do you know why? Because they're older. Because they're older, that's right. And when you get older, you get different kinds of sweat glands. They're called apocrine glands. They make different sorts of sweat. It's got more chemicals in, which gets broken down by bacteria. So what you're really smelling in here is bacteria poo. There you go. You're the one smelling it, not me. I haven't smelled it. Oh, no. oh. Remember, all sweat is completely normal, even the smelly variety. And you can make sure you don't stay smelly by washing yourself and your clothes regularly. Speaking of washing, guys, you better not forget to wash all your kits. Guys? Guys? How much sweat does the average adult produce in a year? Is it A, enough to fill a large water pistol? B, enough to fill a bucket, or C, enough to fill a family car? In fact, the answer is C, enough to fill a family car. 1,264 litres, to be precise. Ugh. This is a case for investigation. Ouch. Ugh. Your feet have over 250,000 sweat glands. Sweat is mainly salt and water, but when you mix it with the otherwise harmless bacteria that live on my feet and the warm, moist socks that they live in, it's a real feast. And what you're smelling is the waste products from the bacteria. <coughs> this is Loughborough University, the place to come to study all things sweaty. We're going to find out why we sweat and find out where we sweat the most. Using some high-tech equipment and this sweat collection vest, we're going to collect Chris's sweat. 
Now I've got to run on this treadmill in this room, which is kept at 50 degrees Celsius, and I promise you that is really hot. If your bath was this hot, you'd burn yourself. Off you go, then. I'm just jogging, you know, if I was doing this outside, this would be relatively easy. And I've just got these fans in front of me blowing hot air at me. Running in a room which is 50 degrees is causing Chris's body temperature to rise dramatically. If it rose to the same temperature as the room, he'd definitely be dead. So I need to lose heat, and it's very hard to lose heat when the air around you is hotter than you need to be. And the only way you can do it is by sweating. So hot it hurts! So the reason we sweat is to take the heat energy away from our bodies to allow us to cool down when we get hot. But it doesn't work very well when you put on a bin bag it stops you evaporating the sweat. True, but you can't stop running yet. The sweat Chris is producing is not only full of salt, there are other things lurking in there too. And in fact, sweat is a lot like your pee. It's a lot like urine. So you can think about that next time you're licking it off your upper lip. Gross. I think we've got enough sweat, though. OK, let's uh, stop Chris. This is Professor George Havanith, an expert in sweat. Well, it's a smelly job, but somebody's got to do it. He's weighing all the pads from Chris's vest and shoes to find out how much sweat he's made and where the most sweat has come from. So he just measured me, and I'm a kilo lighter now than I was at the beginning of my run, and that is that much sweat that I've made, which is quite a lot in half an hour, isn't it? It is a lot, yes. Uh, typically, top athletes would go up to three to four litres. I think you, with just over a litre in four, half an hour, 40 minutes, that's a great performance, I would say. I'm slightly offended, slightly offended. I thought I was a top athlete. <laughs> Dream on, Chris. Anyway, let's find out where you are the sweatiest. We compare the different values for the pads. Mm -hmm. What we see is that you sweat a lot more on, on your back, on your spine, rather than on the front. So, really? OK. And that's typically what we find in general when we measure people. The sweatiest part of your body is your forehead, with almost everybody. Usually about double the amount of the rest of the body. And then the back is the second part. What about my feet? Yeah, surprisingly enough, feet sweat a lot less than we think. Usually, usually we have feet in shoes, mm -hmm. and that, of course, encapsulates the sweat, and that's why we think they're very sweaty. But when we exercise, feet sweat only about a fifth of the rest of your body. So, we now know that Chris's feet are not the sweatiest part of his body, but are they the smelliest? Let's find out. So I've been running in the heat room, I've sweated masses, but which smells worse, the pads from my body or my feet? You've got to find someone willing to have a whiff first, though. No, no thanks. No thanks, you sure? Yeah. Just smell my trainers? <laughs> no? First, sweat mm. from his body. Yeah. What do you think? Not very nice. <laughs> it's, it's not a great smell, to be honest. <laughs> OK, try a trainer. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> that's disgusting. Oh, yeah, they're bad. <laughs> oh, grim. <laughs> anyway, I think we've got a whiffy winner. My feet were by a long way the smelliest, and I don't find that surprising. These are Zahn's trainers. Oh, that's where they went. But it's clear that despite our feet being less sweaty than other parts of our bodies, they are indeed smellier. And that's because they're wrapped up in shoes every day. But without sweat, your body wouldn't be able to regulate its temperature and you simply wouldn't survive.